Hi everyone, welcome to The Hairwire. I am Carrie Jarrett. Today I'm gonna to be talking about expert hacks on how to camouflage thinning hair. As a cosmetologist, trichologist, I get this often, I see a lot of people with thinning hair, so I'm gonna show you some of my tricks. So further ado, stay tuned, because I'm just gonna switch over to our intro and get deep into camouflaging thinner hair. Well, welcome. Thank you for joining uh, me today. Today I'm on my own. Um, we have Sergio who is on a vacation for his birthday with his lovely wife and Bissan taking a day off to spend time with her family. And so we have taken upon ourselves to each do our own presentation and we're just kind of filling it out, see how it's going to go. Um, but today I wanted to talk about hacks for camouflaging thinning hair. I know we talk about trips, um, for treatments and solutions, but what are the temporary hacks or fixes to camouflage the thinning hair that we don't talk about? And so I thought, you know, what a great way to kind of talk about this and share some tips that I use behind the chair in the salon. So here, I'm just gonna pull up my list here. So then that way I could follow it, make sure I get all of the great little tips for you guys. And we will go from there. Just give me one moment. Yeah, so with thinning hair, I find that we're always looking for uh, for solutions. And we first thing we automatically do is we go to go use a topper or a wig. Um, but there are other options. And as a hair stylist who is in, in trichology, I know a few tricks up my sleeve to help you camouflage the thinning hair. There's so many options for you to use. So I'm going to be talking about that, um, starting with... Um, in no particular order. Now, first thing that I really like it, it to reiterate is less is more. I find a lot of times people in their styling, they overuse product. Less is more. Too much could actually make your hair look dirtier. It may look heavier. It may look more PC, so more transparent, more see-through. I find with it's easier to add product versus taking hair product away. So when I am educating my clients, especially with finer or thinner hair, or thinning hair, whether it be short or long, I always say to start small. You could always add. So remember that. And I find a lot of times when we start with hair product, we end up just saturating with hairspray and mousse and leave-in conditioners and serums and pomades. Less is more. Okay. Now, one of my favorite ones for um, thickening hair is using a really good solid salon quality volumizing shampoo and conditioner. If your stylist is really adverse or knowledgeable in their product, they can recommend some really solid products for thickening hair. Um, myself, I particularly like the 11 volumizing just because it does leave a little bit of a fiber on there to make it thick without it feeling like there's anything on the hair. I've noticed a dramatic difference in that. I also want to reiterate the way you style your hair using styling techniques and tools will also make give your hair the illusion of thickness too. So you may not have a lot of hair at the moment, but there are tricks to give the illusion of thicker, fuller hair. So my favorite styling technique for drying hair is what I'll do is I'll take my client's hair and I'll take everything from the parado ridge. And I actually, believe it or not, don't use round brushes for styling hair. I learned quite young how to do blowouts with just my hands. Um, I worked for a, um, an Aveda celebrity hairdresser who actually took my brushes and said, if you're gonna work with me, you're gonna learn to do a full blow up with a bob with your hands and a paddle brush and that is it. And he next took away my paddle brush and I had to do it with just my hands. And it was a game changer for me. And I tell you, I could do a lot with my hands. These are magical tools. Now, my favorite styling technique for giving volume is I'll take the hair from where the crown will sit on top of the head and I'll essentially pull it up with the blow dryer and I'll blow dry the roots dry in the opposite direction. It gives optimal volume. And when the roots are really dry, I finally let the hair down and then I dry take the hair dryer and blow the rest of my hair down to get the cuticle nice and smooth and flat and shiny. Now, with that being said, when I am styling, you know, you will get the little flyaways and people are like, well, the flyaways, it's going to be, you know, 
in the way I don't want to use them, don't use hairspray first off. What I'm going to get you to recommend is get a matte smile pomade or clay. I really like Eleven's dry powder foaming paste just because it's very matte, it has a nice finish, it doesn't look shiny, and it's malleable. And so what I'll do, and I do, I use this for my dress work, I use this for my long hair, I use this on my daughter's fine hair, I use it on my son's hair, it is my go-to. Um, what I'll do if I'm trying to get volume at the root, I'll just put a little bit at my fingers and I'll really shuffle the roots up using this fiber. And then what I'll do is I'll take a little bit more of that paste, put it on the edges of my fingers, and I'll comb, I'll apply it to the little flyaways. And what it's doing is it's just laying those flyaways down, but I'm also taking advantage of those little flies to lift the hair and give it more volume. But I'm trying to get them a little more tame so that way they're not so unruly. That's a really great technique for those with thinning hair or fine hair is use those little hairs at, to your advantage to give you a little bit more volume and a little more boof. Now, Next styling product that I really, really, really like to use is, I and mean, then you hear me watch this show all the time with us, is serum. I can't stress serum enough. I find hair, especially when you have thinning hair and you don't nourish it, you don't moisturize it, I find people have a tendency not to cut their hair as often. They're like, well, I'm growing my hair out. Well, guess what? If you don't cut your hair on a regular basis, it's going to cause split ends, and those split ends are essentially going to cause them to cut themselves and break off. On your kids, I'm sure you went and picked blades of grass out of the grass and you would split the blade and it would ride up the shaft of the blade. Well, your hair, the split in is doing the same thing, causing it to be thinner, have breaking points and very brittle. So you want to make sure you get those, those cut out as soon as you can, but also use a serum or a hair oil of choice um, for hair. There's scalp oil and hair oil. We're talking about hair oil right now. Um, you want to use that oil to nourish the ends of the hair because if the ends of the hair aren't moisturized, what's going to happen too, they're going to get dry and brittle. Just like, you know, when you go to a tree branch and it's really dry, a tree branch on the, the branches that are really dry and brittle, they break very easily. Your hair does the same thing. So it's important to nourish the ends. And a lot of times people think, oh, my hair's greasy. I don't use oil. The oil's going to make my hair greasy. Not at all if it's used correctly. You're supposed to use it where you're supposed to apply a couple, a pump or two. To, remember, start small and then add as you need and apply it from where it touches either your ears or your, or your chin down. The hair from root to ear level to chin level doesn't need the oil on the hair. Primarily because your oils have enough chance to ride the hair shaft all the way down to the area before it needs time to wash the hair. And traditionally back in the day, I remember we used to use bristle brushes to pull those oils, those natural oils down to the ends of our hair. But we're so accustomed to washing our hair every single day or every other day that those oils don't have a chance to get from root's end. And that's why we use products like this to help nourish the air from root end. Very critical. If you want to learn more about serums, you could go check out my website, um, trichologycoach.com. I have lots about serums on there and how to apply it. Um, and it, it's just, it's so critical that you make sure you moisturize. Whether you'd be short hair, thick hair, long hair, my husband uses it, my daughter uses it, my son uses it. It just helps with static, dry brittle hair, helps the hair grow faster and more full root end without causing the split ends to come through. Now, there are other styling products I really, really like. There's a lot of great texturizing sprays that you can use to make the hair look thicker. I know texturizing sprays are kind of that, st that steep slope because you can find ones that actually cause too much fiber, fiber in the hair, causing it to get really matted really easily. But there are ones that can give you that texture without feeling like every time you move, it's getting matted or knotted. Um, and it's just a matter of talking to your stylist and finding one that doesn't have too much of that, almost that... Um, Velcro effect has more of a texturizing effect. Like for example, I really like using any of like texturizing powders at the root on the end. I know Eleven makes a really good um, fine hair fiber and it's used, it uses a powder, like a baby powder instead to put in the hair without it kind of making that granule effect causing the hair to be more matted. Really great product. Um, so check with the stylist. If you want to do me to do a presentation more on the specific products and what to do and how to use them, type in the comments product and I'll make a presentation for you guys outlining exactly each product and how to use them. I find a lot of times too with product, we don't understand how to use them or how we can use them or think outside of the box to use them to benefit for thinning hair or, or helping give you more texture and more volume. Now, 
if I have a client come into my chair who wants to help camouflage thinning hair, cutting technique is huge, 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 huge. A lot of times they go to stylists, they go and they do the traditional basic cut that they learned in school, but they actually don't go and read the calyx, they don't go and read the hair, and they don't put texture in the hair to give it the illusion of thickness. And a lot of times people come, and I've had a lot of clients come in and like, I don't want to cut my hair, I want to keep it long and thick, but it looks very thin, what do I do? Well, Sometimes putting a little texture, a little bit of layers or um, shag into the cut, you can still give that illusion of one length, but we want to put a little change the weight of the hair and how it lays. So it gives the illusion of movement and the illusion of thickness. And if you have a really skilled stylist, they can do this. I know a lot of people who are Aveda alumni, Vidal Sassoon alumni. There are quite a few, or if you talk to your stylist on their techniques and their training on doing wash and wear haircuts, you know if they're really skilled in wash and wear haircuts, you're going to have a really solid cut that's going to give you the work way and that illusion to give that that really good cut to give you the illusion of thickness, fullness, and movement. And that is the key. Now you can use also color to make your hair thicker. There are two different ways you can use color to either add texture to the hair, where you bleach the hair to break up that fiber if your hair is very slippery to give it some more volume. It's not my favorite. I might use it for somebody who has more slippery hair and they want to get more volume. But for a client who has very thin hair and me, don't want to strip the hair or use any bleach to strip the hair and make the density of the hair thinner. What I like to use is I like to put a deposit only color such as a demi. My favorite, I'm going to push this, is Color Sync from Matrix. They have a phenomenal demi. What essentially it does is puts a coat of color on top of the hair, almost like a coat of nail polish on nails. You know when you get your nails done at the salon, you put the coat of nail polish to protect the color or the, de the, text the nail. That's what the demi is, and it's adding density to the hair to make it thicker. So if you go and you get, and it helps even too, if you strip or bleach your hair, you want to make sure you have a demi toner on there because that's going to help protect the hair from breaking, being brittle, any of that. And so you want to make sure that you're putting that in the demi on there. And I've noticed a lot of clients who I have who have thinning hair and we're just doing, they want to add thickness. I'll just put a clear on there. I'm not adjusting the color. I'm just putting a clear on just to give them a little more density to the hair. We do it every five weeks, sometimes longer, depending on the client and the client's needs. And it just gives them a little de de more definition to the hair. And you'll notice there's almost like a 10% difference in the thickness of the hair. I know a lot of my clients, they notice it now. They're like, my hair is brittle or it's kind of dull and lifeless. Can we put the clear on just to give it a little more volume and a little more movement? And a lot of my clients do found it protected their hair and helped them grow their hair faster, quicker because it wasn't broken or brittle and it was being nourished. Now, another one is um, teasing your hair correctly. I find I have a lot of clients come in with fine, thin hair, and they tease their hair, which is fine, but you ought to make sure you do it correctly. I find a lot of times when people are going to tease fine hair, they just go on and put their comb and just reef on it. First off, you're damaging the follicle, you're causing more breakage, and you're causing tension at the root to cause tension, um, traction alopecia, which you don't want to have that. What you want to do to get a really good solid foundation for teasing is lift the hair and halfway through the hair shaft, what I'll do, and I like to use a carbon fiber comb. I find with the carbon fiber comb, the carbon fiber comb has less static in it. I find with the plastic comb, I get more static. It has more traction to hold the hair and give you volume. And it, it's just better all around for teasing. Now, what I do is I start from the middle and I loosen the hair and I pull them once, twice, three times, and I'll take my tail comb and pat it down. Now look at that volume, just from three little teases there. And you just keep layering on those teases, the with your comb until you get the volume that you want. Now I find the more, the further away you do that tease, also make sure you're scooping the hair down versus pushing it down with a lot of friction. Less tension, the better you're gonna have a better tease at the base of the hair to get that volume. And I don't, I do not like to use hairsprays when I'm teasing hair, probably because primarily it's because the hairspray, the fiber breaks throughout the day and that alcohol in the hair is also very hard on the hair. And my whole key is to keep the hair really strong and healthy to so that way it has a chance to grow and be nourished. And so with that hairspray, um, I will not do hairspray. I will use more of a fiber texture or a matte pomade or, um, 
maybe a matte wax, like a dry finish wax I'll use. So that way it will give me a really good foundation to use to get that base for a solid tease. Now there are other ways that you could also help with thinning hair. So say you have thin hair that it's, you could see through the hair and see the scalp. Quite common, I see this quite often. And there's a few different ways that you could fix that. Um, my latest one that I really love is for women with the, with the hormone, with the thinning hair around the sides. I really like those, um, they're eyebrow pencils or eyebrow pens and they have like three little prongs on the end. And what I'll do is I'll just do little light notches around the hairline to give the illusion of hair growing around the hairline. It does take practice. Don't do it in the morning before you have to go someplace. You want to make sure you practice it a few times to get the technique going. And there's some great videos on YouTube on how to do that properly. And it's essentially the same way as filling in an eyebrow. However, you're filling in that hairline to give the illusion of the hair along the hairline. Next, you can use different um, powders. I There's a few that I often recommend is Eclipse or Sure Thick. Um, and what they are is just their fibers that you put onto the scalp like a salt and pepper shaker or you could use um, little tools where it puff out the powder and you could put it on the scalp. And what that will do, it will fill in the skin on the scalp so that way it gives the illusion of thicker, fuller hair. Now, one little trick, I'm gonna show you a little hack here. I find a lot of times be like, well, when I do that, I lose the part line. Use a tail comb. You could put it on your scalp and literally just ride the tail comb. Oh, there's a hairline. Um, take the tail comb and ride it along the hairline and you'll take that part and you'll get a nice, beautiful part. Now, there are different tricks that you could do with that too. I also ha have used um, eyeshadow or eyebrow powder on the scalp especially for those little hairlines me i don't have thin hair but i have a weird patch that i've had since a child this little thin one so if i'm doing a dress work or i have a dance competition i might put a little bit here just to give it that illusion because i have that weird part hair growth line which is a birthmark for me or a trademark of mine um, and i might put a little bit there just to make it look thicker fuller and i have a, more of a solid hairline another technique that you can use is um eyeliner pencils to give those lines and then if you want something a little more semi-permanent not so permanent you can get scalp micropigmentation and it is a semi it is um, permanent makeup and it doesn't last forever you do have to get it retouched up but it can last from four to eight years depending on the client the skin the environment the climate there's a whole bunch of other things you can consider but it's essentially doing micro tattoos on the scalp to mimic a hair follicle which will make the hair look thicker um, Bissan specializes in that. I do it as well. Um, I know a few trichologists that offer that service and it's a great little service, especially for those with the thinning hair and who don't want to be adding the fiber every day. Now, another use you can use a crimper. A crimper works really great for giving that texture at the root. I use it on thin hair, thick hair. I use it on fine hair, transparent hair. And the crimper, what I do is if you got to get the ultra fine crimper, not the thicker crimper it's quite the beads between each crimper are about three four millimeters and what you do is at the root is you just do about an inch of a crimp between each section so you do a section straight a section crimped a section straight a section crimped and a section straight and that crimp will essentially give you that volume as well and i find too with that texture in it especially when you have more transparent hair on the top it kind of makes the hair look more matted and thicker, especially if you don't have the hair to create a mat or a tease at the base, that crimp will give you that illusion. But proceed with caution, please use a heat protector when you're doing that because we still want to protect the integrity of the hair and keep it as thick and as full. Now, there are other options that you can use for um, temporary camouflaging thinning hair, hair extensions. I love hair extensions. I know every single application out there and I use a variant of them. Every single one of my clients has a different variation, whether they have microlinks with a weave or a weave with fusion or UV extensions, you name it. And depending on the skills of the stylist and how many applications they know for hair extensions, you can do some very transformative work with thinning hair. Um, I know with my a lot of men, I do do micro, micro, minute micro, 
fusion hair extensions at the crown, but you have to have someone who's quite skilled to do that. It does take practice because otherwise it can look like you have little um, nuggets on your hair. So if it's done correctly, you could get to some transformation, but it does again take practice. Um, and there is a new new um, hair extension technique coming out um, using UV light extensions. And you can look them on TikTok or Reels. They're quite cool. And it's using UV light to set extensions. And the bond is quite small. So you can get up right to the hairline. Now, when you're getting extensions, you want to make sure too, you're getting someone who is skilled and knows what they're doing. They're not doing it too tight at the scalp to cause comp to compromise the hair or damage. So make sure you know what you're getting into before you get in them. And then there's you can use wiglets. Wiglets are just tiny little toppers or hair pieces that you can use that are great for thinning hair. I have a lot of clients who use them for bangs or frontal or who have the widow's peak here to get the little thickness or um, the, the hair wire. Yes, we, the hair wire. There is a hair extension that is called the hair wire <laughs> and it's essentially just a fish wire with thickness of hair to give you that thickness and fullness at the back and you wear like a headband i really do like that one particularly because you're not compromising hair and you can take it at night out at night to give your scalp a break and i encourage my clients to use it more on times that they're going out or going to work rather than using it every day and then there are as well, of course, wigs and hair pieces, which are great. However, as a trichologist, I'm not a big fan of them all the time. However, my friend, my colleague, Linda Boise, is getting me more open to be open to toppers, especially ones that breathe. But traditionally, the ones that I have seen don't allow a lot of breathing of the scalp. And as a trichologist, the more air and exposure to the, to the sun and stuff, I, I like for that vitamin D and healing of that scalp, but I am open it. I'm learning, so bear with me. But if you want to check on our other YouTube videos, look up Linda Boise. She does talk about the options for hair toppers that do have um, breathability. And so that way you could still do your treatments and take care of your hair and stimulate hair growth. Now, I'm going to add a little bonus here for tips and tricks on how to grow your hair faster. I know a lot of people who have had thinning or hair loss, especially after, say, a traumatic episode of and had an extreme telogen effluvium. A lot of clients are asking, well, how do I get my hair to grow faster? Well, first off, getting your regular traps. Nourishing, moisturizing your hair. Eating for your body. And what I mean by that is um, eating healthy foods, healthy proteins, healthy fats, healthy carbs. That's going to help build and give you the nutrients that you need to create the proteins and the melanin in your hair to grow your hair. Now, we also have to make sure that we take care of our body for gut health is not in check and we are growing the hair, but our body's in check and it's not holding the hair. We do have to investigate that. So if you find that you are growing your hair fast, but it's shedding quite quickly, you might want to investigate something else might be happening because usually with hair growth or hair loss, there's something internal happening. It's a biomarker of your body to say, hey, listen to me, there's something going on here. Now, Another few tricks to help with stimulating the hair growth is exercise. I can't stress exercise enough. And it's funny, I actually have my cousin who has always struggled with thin hair, putting in extensions. And recently she's got into marathon running. She's a big marathon runner. She sat in my chair and asked me to thin her hair out the other day. We have never had her do that. And it's because she's getting the exercise. She is creating that energy to produce hair and grow her hair. And so there is evidential proof that exercise is so beneficial in getting your heart rate. And I can't stress that enough. If you want to speed up hair growth, exercise minimum 20 minutes a day, get your heart rate up 10 minutes morning, 10 minutes night, just get your heart rate. You want to get the pump going to get circulation to to create more energy to grow your hair faster. And hydration, I do see this quite often is the amount of people that are dehydrated Dehydration causes hair loss. It causes broken hair, causes brittle hair, it causes hair shed. So you want to make sure that you're hydrated. And I know it's so hard to track how much water you're taking. I need to take eight cups. I need to take six cups, you know, to do it. But honestly, I have learned a trick from my hematologist and it's monitor your urine. So instead of counting cups, look at your urine. If it's yellow, you need more fluid. Drink more fluid. If you find that it's the clearer, the better. You're, you're getting enough hydration. And you know what? It's going to help make you look younger. It's going to keep your brain more functioning and more alert. You're going to have better sleep. You're not going to be dry and itchy. There's just so many benefits of water. We're made up of water, you guys. You want to make sure that you do that. And the more yellow your, water, your urine is, 
the more dehydrated you are. Now, if you find you're drinking enough fluids, but your urine is still yellow, look, maybe something you're missing a mineral. Maybe add a little bit of salt to your diet to see if that makes a difference or get it investigated if that's still not, help, not working. Another way to help stimulate hair growth is my favorite one is scalp massaging and um, tapping. So if I'm in front of the TV, I have an electric scalp massager, which I like to use, which you can get the links on the hairwire.com under shop. We have the links there. But it's just a little electric massager. And what I'll do is while I'm watching a show, I need, need my scalp just to get more circulation to the scalp. I'll tap it. If I'm in the shower, I make sure I exfoliate really good to get my skin clean to help keep my scalp very healthy to stimulate hair growth as well. So there he goes. There's some solid tricks to stimulate and make your hair grow faster. And I give you some really good tricks and hacks to camouflage thinning hair. I hope you could benefit from it. And if you want to learn more, put in the in the comments product or technique and maybe I could do a little workshop for you guys hands on where I'm actually applying these techniques on a magic head or a real person and I could show you those. Now, if you're a hairstylist, cosmetologist, and you would have to prove otherwise that you are a licensed professional and you want me to do some cutting classes for helping your clients camouflage that thinning hair, put in the comments um, cutting techniques. And so that way I know if you guys are looking for that information, maybe I can create a couple online cutting classes to help you with reading the hair and cutting the hair to give it more of a wash and wear effect to get that thicker illusion of thicker, fuller hair for your client. Anyways, my name is Carrie Jarrett. Thank you for watching me on The Hair Wire. And if you want to learn more about trichology and cosmetology or wellness, please follow us. Hit the notification um, in the video and like us, subscribe, share. If you know people who benefit from this video, tag them, please, because we just want to get out there and help support people with education on hair loss, scalp health, you know, you name it. And I can't reiterate enough. There's more than one type of alopecia, you guys. So if you're struggling with thinning hair, fine hair, you want to follow the hair wire so you can figure out what's going on because it's not a one size fits all world. And there are more than one type of alopecia. And this is where you're going to get that information. Anyways, thank you very much. And we'll see you next week on Wednesday with the whole gang.